Today we're going to be covering one of the most important topics for Pokemon Legends Arceus, and that is everything you need to know before you start your very own adventure in the Hisui region. Let's get started. Hello everybody, Blaine here for Bridge 4 Games. Yeah, this is a very important topic that we're going to be covering today, and honestly, I want to be able to use my 40 plus hours of gameplay I have for Pokemon Legends Arceus so far to really share with you guys and just kind of give you guys an idea of what to expect when you start your game. So there's a lot you need to know because there's a lot of things that caught me off guard. And honestly, I've played every single Pokemon game since Pokemon Red and Blue back in 97. So I considered myself something of an expert for Pokemon and I still got rocked a couple times in the early game. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys some tips and pointers that I put together for starting your very own adventure in the Hisui region. So you guys can have a little bit better of a time starting off than I did. Obviously, keep in mind that this list is a bunch of suggestions I have and kind of figured out from my own playthrough. But again, if you don't want to follow it, feel free to not do that. And, uh, right, well. good luck. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get started and just dive right in. But before I do, I just want to take a second to ask that if you like the videos we have here on the channel, please make sure that you actually like them by hitting the thumbs up button. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel to become part of our amazing Pokemon community to make sure that you never miss any of the awesome videos like this one. All right, let's get started with tip number one. All right, everybody, I just want to make one thing clear. From this point forward, we are talking about spoiler territory. I'm not going to be really hitting on any real story elements, but there are some things that are going to probably be spoiled because I need to explain parts of the game to you to kind of understand what the issues are and what you should be doing. So because of that, consider yourself warned, but all the spoilers should be pretty minor going forward. So that being said, the first tip I have for you guys, don't waste any time in the beginning of the game resetting for shiny starters. They are shiny locked. So... A lot of people are unhappy about this. A lot of people are very happy about this. I suppose I'm on the un team unhappy for this one, but I can see why they did it. So all the starter Pokemon in the game, you know, the Rowlet, the Oshawott, and the Cyndaquil, they are all shiny locked. So the first time that you encounter them, you are going to have to catch them for Professor Leventon. And at that point, they are shiny locked. Additionally, when you pick them up, when you are in Galactic Headquarters, they are shiny locked as well. So if you do encounter them in the wild, they can be shiny there. For the beginning of the game, the first encounters that you're going to have with them, they are shiny locked. Now, the idea is that they did this to prevent people from shiny hunting in the beginning of the game so they can actually dive in and explore the games. And I suppose that makes sense because they want everybody to really go out and play and explore. But, you know, that being said... I, I kind of kind of the motto on the channel here is the best Pokemon games are the, are the ones that you love to play and the proper ways to play them out however you have the most fun. So if you're going to have fun shiny hunting, I think you should be able to. But I guess that's neither here nor there. Just don't waste your time on it because you can't get them shiny at the beginning of the game. So speaking of starters, that brings us to tip number two. All starters are kind of equal in this game. So kind of just pick whoever you like. So in some games, there's a clear kind of definitive best mon. In this game, it's not so much the case because all three of the starters have five weaknesses or more. So honestly, they're all pretty, you know, fragile in the same kind of way. And they all have decent coverage against the same types of things also. For just for the record, I went ahead and picked Cyndaquil because honestly, I like the fire and ghost typing that Typhlosion offers. And I also really liked its monstrous special attack stat. But again, for the most part, the starters are really balanced. So just pick whatever one you think is the best. All right, and that brings us to tip number three. So obviously a lot of people like to shiny hunt and reset their games for their perfect starter, but a lot of people like to also reset their games to get a starter with high IVs. So don't bother doing that either really because IVs and EVs are still in the game, but they don't really affect stats at all. So this is a pretty major change that was made to the game because the sort of leveling system works a lot differently. So again, IVs and EVs are still calculated. You can still have zero to 31 IVs, and then you can also have you know, your typical amount of experience gained, which I imagine the reason they did this but don't have it working for anything is because we are going to be able to transfer these Pokemon to Pokemon Home and then eventually into Gen 9. So I imagine they still need to have those markers there to make everything make sense. But in this game, your stats are determined by something called uh, effort levels. Now, effort levels are kind of comprised based on what your EV stat is. It's calculated and put into a new number. Honestly, there's a lot kind of, of information here, and I'm going to be covering that in its own future video. But obviously, I do have a picture up on the screen right now, kind of just giving you an overlay that came to us from Cerebi. So obviously, shout out to Joe Merrick. That's very, very helpful. And on top of that, you know, for kind of leveling up and improving your stats, obviously, they'll go up as you level up and become, you know, a new Pokemon, things like that. But items like Grit Dust, Grit Gravel, Grit Pebble, and Grit Rock are able to actually raise your stats. So those are kind of like your vitamin type items that are going to give you those boosts there they just don't actually boost evs or anything like that they just boost those effort levels so kind of interesting kind of eager to see you know what happens there 
And the way I found all this out brings us into my number four tip. Actually, listen to the NPCs. You don't know what you're doing. So now, I know that's kind of a harsh thing to say, but listen to me. This game is much different than other Pokemon games you have played. I, myself, am a very, very guilty person of button mashing my way through text boxes in Pokemon games because obviously I have content here for the channel I want to get up. And, you know, honestly, I just kind of want to get to the end to you know, begin putting out my content for you guys so I can share it with all of you. But honestly, in Pokemon Legends Arceus, you need to take your time because there's a lot to unpack. Things are much different. Even just learning how to throw the Pokeballs, learning how to use kind of the different combat system. Everything is completely different. And because of that, you really need to pay attention so you actually know how to play it. Because I kind of sped through a little bit of it and had to kind of learn afterward when I kind of had no idea what I was doing. So because of that, I highly recommend, probably for the first time ever, that you actually listen to what the NPCs have to say and actually follow their guidance to uh, learn how to play the game. And on top of that, the story is really cool, so you're going to be getting a lot of enjoyment out of it as well. All right, and while we're talking about changes, let's go ahead and talk about number five. So unfortunately in this game, abilities and held items are gone. So kind of an interesting switch they made here. So Pokemon, like, I immediately went and tried to get a Gyarados and, like, a Staraptor because I was, like, getting that dual Intimidate, and then I remembered they don't have Intimidate. So, obviously, if you're choosing a Mon for your team based on that, it's not going to have it. Like, Raichu and Pikachu don't have Lightning Rod, so don't just slap it on a team with a bunch of Flyers and hope it's going to work. You know, there's a couple other instances of Mons that really need their abilities, like uh, Hippowdon really wants Sandstream, things like that. And, unfortunately, in this game, they simply don't have them. So... On top of that, you know, held items, you really need to use the items that you actually have, like your potions and whatnot, to revive your Pokemon. You can't give them, you know, berries or anything like that because, frankly, it's it's just not in the game. So you don't have any other way to recover your mods. So because of that, you really need to make sure you're being very careful in battle and you adjust your strategies accordingly now that those two features are removed. Now, there is one, frankly, hilarious caveat to this, and that is Regigigas. So all abilities are gone, However, they left Regigigas' ability on there because they still wanted it to have slow start, even in a world with no abilities. So, man, why I used Regigigas in VGC to actually get to a pretty high finish in the Players' Cup 3. Why is everybody got to be hating on him? I, I kind of wanted to see the reign of Regigigas with no abilities, but in any event, I don't know. They're gone. Make sure you adjust your plans accordingly so you don't get wrecked accidentally, kind of like I did. All right, so we've talked about some things that are gone. Let's talk about what is here. And that brings us to number six, explore and collect everything. So this game is pretty big. Even though it's not entirely open world, it kind of is because much like Monster Hunter, how the regions are very kind of contained when you go on a mission, it's like that here as well. But the region is very open and a lot of paths kind of circle and snake back in on themselves. A lot of the water really is pretty open and can take you to different areas. So... There's a lot to explore here. There's a lot of miscellaneous items and random Pokemon that are just stashed away that you really don't find unless you're accidentally looking for them. So, you know, it, it's really cool that they added that much exploration into the game, and I highly recommend that you do it to really take advantage of this new, you know, aspect of the games. Now, on top of that, crafting is a major, major, major element in these games. You have to craft everything from Pokeballs to Great Balls, Ultra Balls, your heavy balls, your feather balls, all of those you are going to be crafting. So if you see an apricorn, get them. Send out a Pokemon, hit the tree, collect them because you need them. You will run out of Pokeballs sooner or later because honestly throwing them at Pokemon while you're hiding in the grass is just so much fun and you will run out sooner or later. So don't get stuck without items. You are going to need them. And the best way to make sure that you always have plenty is by pretty much collecting all the items you see. So just spend a second, knock down the tree, get your, you know, berries or whatever, get your apricorns, and you'll be all set. And that brings me to number seven. So obviously we're going to have a lot of items we need to have on our person at all times, but we do have a limited bag capacity, which is, again, very new for Pokemon. In pretty much all the other games, our backpacks are just kind of a bottomless pit of items. You can have, back in the days of missing, no, you know, 999 of everything, and you just, you know, somehow it all fits. In this game, we have limited space. Again, very kind of more like some of you know, the action RPGs that people are more familiar with. So that being said, in the Galactic Headquarters, there is a person who will expand your bag for you. Now, I believe you get one slot each time, and then the price doubles for the next time. It gets to like $1,200, $2,400, $4,800 Pokedollars really quickly. But let me tell you this, 
it is worth every single penny. Spend as much as you're able to afford because honestly, you need to expand that bag to hold as much stuff as possible. There are just so many items that get dropped that you pick up as you're just going through the areas that you will have your bag filled all the time. And you really don't want to be dumping, you know, random items in the middle of an adventure because you come across a rare item and you have nowhere to put it. So fork over the money, pay the guy and get a very large bag to hold all of your goodies. All right. And that brings me to kind of the next point here for number eight. Don't waste your items. Now, this is pretty obvious, but again, you know, don't actually know what your items do. Initially, I just chucked an apricorn at a Pokemon to see what would happen, and I ran out of Pokeballs sometime later. So, you know, try to actually conserve your items to the best of your ability. Obviously, that's not going to be true in every single instance, but again, just make sure you're not wasting your items. Make sure you have them on hand because you really don't want to be in the middle of an adventure and not have an item that you're going to need to help you actually beat the challenge you have. And that's actually going to take us into number nine. So when you are in the game and you are out catching Pokemon, hunting Pokemon down, make sure you take your time, line up your shots, make sure you're actually going to hit the Pokemon with the ball that you throw. And most importantly, so down in the lower right hand corner, you have a selection screen to switch between throwing a Pokeball with your Pokemon in it or throwing an empty Pokeball or food or something like that. At least about 20 times in the course of the game, I had the wrong thing selected. So I either threw a Pokemon at a Pokemon where I didn't want to start a battle, but one began, or I threw a Pokeball just completely into the middle of a battle and lost it because the Pokemon wasn't catchable. So unfortunately that happened to me. I don't want to see it happen to you. So just take a second, make sure you have the right item selected make sure you're all lined up for your shot and go ahead and add that awesome Pokemon to your collection. And speaking about adding Pokemon to your collection, that brings us to number 10. Catch every new Pokemon you see, no matter what. Now I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I've seen Bidoofs before. Yeah, I've seen Starlies before. Why would I want them? No, no, no. Catch them. You need to catch them. And I'm going to tell you why. So aside from finishing the Pokedex, which is very important, each Pokedex entry actually can be leveled up up to 10 levels. And honestly, the challenges that are required to do each one are all different, which is pretty interesting. So in the case of Bidoof, you have to catch multiple Bidoof. And sometimes you have to catch it when it's not looking at you. Or sometimes you have to see a Pokemon use a certain move over and over again. Honestly, the challenges that are in each Pokedex section change all the time, but by filling those out, you're going to be getting a lot of star points for your galactic ranking. And one thing you do not want to have to do is backtrack all the way back to the beginning to get a Bidoof or a Bibberl because you just didn't grab it the first time around. So honestly, take a few seconds, just catch everything you see, at least one of it, or, you know, at least try to, to make sure that you don't have any major gaps in your Pokedex. And also on top of that, we recently found out that shiny hunting is going to be tied into the Pokedex as well. So if you have a completed Pokedex, you're going to get two rolls added on to your normal one shiny roll. Now, you may know a plus two roll to your shinies as a shiny charm. So yeah, if you complete your Pokedex, guess what? Free shiny charm that stacks on top of the normal shiny charm. Yeah, pretty awesome. But guess what? That's not it. If you get all the levels up to 10 inside of your game, that's another plus three shiny rolls as well. So in this game, there is a very, very, very high incentive to actually finishing your Pokedex and maxing out each entry. So I can't stress this enough. Take your time, catch your Pokemon, and max out your decks because you will be very handsomely rewarded for doing so. And that actually brings us into number 11. Be smart with evolution. So particularly with your starter Pokemon. So the way the evolution works in the game is when the criteria has been met, the Pokemon don't automatically start evolving. You actually have to select them on your selection screen and then choose to have them evolve. Now, this is pretty cool, and they also have a really awesome evolution sequence, but the issue is that you can't unevolve your Pokemon. So in your Pokedex, if you have a Cyndaquil, and you have not completely maxed out its dex entry to 10, and you go ahead and evolve it into Quilava, until you get another Cyndaquil, you're stuck. Because now you have a Quilava, you don't have a Cyndaquil. So that page for Cyndaquil is going to remain where it is until you have another Cyndaquil to help finish it. So that's kind of a tricky thing in this game. You have to be kind of intelligent with how you evolve your Pokemon, because... You don't want to just evolve it, you know, not thinking, and then you have an unfinished Pokedex for the levels before it. So something to keep in mind, again, if you want to evolve your Pokemon no matter what, go ahead because it, it's really an awesome sequence. You can do it if you want, but honestly, you know, just be methodical about your evolutions to make sure that you're not missing anything because it can be a real pain in the neck to have to backtrack, especially when it's over something really, really small. In this game, grinding is important. So in normal games, you can just knock out a Pokemon and get some experience that way. But in this game, I found it's actually faster to catch a Pokemon and get experience that way. You see, if you're hiding in the bushes, you can just throw a Pokeball, catch your Pokemon, get your experience and move on. Battles tend to take a little bit more time, especially with the agile style and the strong styles. And on top of that, it seems like the Pokemon are just naturally a little more bulky nowadays. I had a, a level 9 Cyndaquil 
use a quick attack on a level two Cricketot. And it only did about a third of its HP to it. I was expecting a lot more. So honestly, just kind of something to keep in mind. You know, you may save a lot of time just by catching the Pokemon and because you may need them for your decks anyways, that's probably a pretty good way to go about doing it. But on top of that, you can run smack dab into Pokemon that you may not be prepared for, so you really want to make sure your Pokemon are properly leveled up. Now that being said, make sure you don't go above the max level that you're able to train to because your Pokemon will disobey you, even your starter Pokemon. It's kind of a mess. So make sure that you're staying within those parameters, but go as high as you can because you're going to need it in this game because there's a lot of threats. And speaking of one of those threats, we're going to talk about Alpha Pokemon next. All right, now for number 13, I cannot stress this enough. Avoid Alpha Pokemon until you're ready. So a lot of other Poketubers have recommended just going after the Alphas no matter what. And to a degree, I think they're right. If you can go in the bushes and just throw a Pokeball and catch it that way, maybe you get lucky somehow. That's fine. Sure, go ahead and do it. What you want to do is not try to actually engage them in battle until you know you can beat them. So because they get all these boosts when they're in their sort of frenzied state, the you know sort of damage and catch calculations that you're used to don't really apply in the same way. There's completely new calculations for their damage as well as their catch rates, so honestly, it may be a lot harder than you're thinking. In one of my first playthroughs, I had pretty much all level 8 and 9 Pokemon, and I ran into a level 40 Alpha. So that's something I wasn't really able to deal with, and even now having Pokemon that are in the 60s, level 40 Alphas can still be a challenge. So something to definitely keep in mind. Make sure if you're going after them, don't try to battle them unless you know you can win and make sure you have a clear exit path out because they will chase you. They will attack you the entire time you're retreating and it can be really, really difficult and you can get KO'd really easily by them and their friends ganging up on you. But all right, let's set aside the battle and talk about number 14 here. So once you get kind of into the game, you are going to start having to collect wisps. Now wisps up here is little kind of, you know, purple flame things just kind of hovering in the overworld and you're going to have to collect them and they are all tying into spirit tomb, which is pretty cool i mean it's a pretty nice little fetch quest kind of thing a lot of people are saying it's very much like zygarde which a lot of people don't like but you know they are scattered pretty much all throughout all the different regions in hisui so because of that if you see one no matter where it is nothing in this game is really timed so just stop go get it because you're not going to want to have to backtrack and find these even joe merrick one of the you know most hardcore grinders for any pokemon game says he absolutely hates finding these things so because of that just you know go ahead find them, take your time, get it, and you will certainly not regret it. And that's going to actually bring us to our last couple here, number 15 and 16. So remember this one very important tip. Falling damage is in the game and you can drown in the game. So if you are falling off a high enough ledge, you can take a lot of damage. Now, that being said, I have jumped off some mighty high cliffs and I have not died. However, I was in the red and then got attacked by a couple of Pokemon and then was knocked out. So you don't want to put yourself in that situation where you, you know, can't really take a hit. So if you are going to be falling off a large cliff or falling into a body of water after which you will drown, hit the minus button and open up your arc phone and take a look at the map. If you've unlocked fast travel after defeating Cleaver, you should be able to teleport back to your base camp. Now, you can't do this if you're being pursued by a Pokemon if the red eye is on you, but that's okay. You can do it midair. You can also do it while you're about to drown in the water. And if you are able to fast travel back to your base camp, you won't die and you won't lose half your items. So obviously, you know, that's really helpful because you don't want to lose all those items you spent all that time kind of, you know, gathering up. So make sure that you keep your thumb ready above the minus button because you never know when you're going to have to fast teleport and save your own skin. All right, so there you have it, everybody. Those are all of my tips to make your playthrough for Pokemon Legends Arceus as fun and as enjoyable as possible without falling into some of the uh, pitfalls that I did. So that being said, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. Most importantly, I hope you found it informative and I hope you're able to use these tips to have the best possible playthrough of Pokemon Legends Arceus that you can. So that being said, everybody, I've been Blaine from Bridge4Games. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. Again, if you did like the video, please remember to absolutely giga impact that like button in the face. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel to become part of our amazing Pokemon community to make sure that you never miss any of the awesome videos like this one. I hope you all are having an awesome Pokemon Legends Arceus release day because the games are finally here. Everybody is so happy because we can finally get our hands on this very cool game. And I hope all of you are having an absolute blast playing the games when you get your copies. So remember, everybody, the best Pokemon games are the ones that you love to play, and the proper ways to play them are however you have the most fun. I hope each and every one of you have a happy, epic, awesome, and amazing day now that Pokemon Legends Arceus is here, and I will see you in the next video. See you around. Bye-bye.